Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. What a week it's been. You can't even get a good scam going in this country anymore, and it's not even a scam. Ironically, what's being what's happening, if you followed anything, uh, is that uh, you know people uh, are trying to buy stock in a free market, um, and they're trying to buy companies like GameStop and AMC and Nokia. These are not companies that are under investigation, and um, they have pushed the prices of these stocks up forcing all the hedge fund managers and hedge funds that have shorted these stocks to cover their bets, and they're not happy about it. So it's, 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 it's really these independent day traders versus, you know, the Goliath uh, institutional big banks hedge fund people, and it's been, it's been unfolding for the last few days. One of the most interesting things in finance that has probably ever happened in history, and people are lining up on either side of it. Dave Portnoy um, and Elon Musk seem to be for this kind yes. of – you know, um, disruption. And then you have people like Elizabeth Warren, who's a fraud, which we know, saying things like, casino-like swings in stock prices of GameStop reflect wild levels of speculation that don't help GameStop's workers or customers and could lead to market instability. What a word, market instability. Today, I told the SEC to explain what it's exactly doing to prevent market manipulation. So if you had any illusion that people like Elizabeth Warren wanted you to make any money, you now that illusion has been smashed permanently. They don't want you to make any money. They don't care. They want they may want you vaccinated, but they don't want you to have any fucking money. Okay, Elizabeth Warren does not want you to have money to better your life and the life of your family. Okay. Remember everyone who was against this. Remember everybody that came out and said that this was egregious and it leads to market instability. And it's a, uh, it, what it really is, is people trying to wrestle back a little bit of power, not even a lot, a tiny bit of power from these oligarchs and they, they won't have it. They can't do it. They won't let you do it. GameStop gets to 400. They halt trading, right? Yeah, yeah, they halt it. Robinhood app, the guys stopped selling uh, AMC. They stopped selling GameStop. And I'm into AMC, a little heavy. And, uh, you know, I didn't get into GameStop early enough. Um, but this is a, the, the biggest disruption the market's seen in a very long time. And, and people like Elizabeth Warren are coming out and going, we know what's best for you. And what's best for you is that you make the money that we say you make. <laughs> We're fighting to get you another dollar an hour at your <laughs> shitty slave wage job. Don't worry about it. We're trying to get you that, and we might get you a little fake health insurance, too. We might get you pretend insurance. How about that? You'll sleep easier with pretend insurance. But don't ever think you can get into the game with the big boys because they own us. It's it's absurd. And uh, I, of course, um, have no illusions about, uh, I unfortunately, I think people should hold these stocks if you can. Push, hold their feet to the fire, keep doing that. Um, and, and we're just going to keep seeing this. It's going to make it harder and harder. They'll introduce some new regulation. They'll say there's a certain net worth requirement to trade. Probably they're going to they're play around with all these things. I mean, you have hedge fund managers crying on CNBC. Right. Leon Cooperman's in tears on CNBC. Be like, I care. I care. That's why I'm upset. It's because I care. Do you care? Leon Cooperman. Um, but yeah, I mean, and they keep bringing him on. He's like freaking out. Yeah, he's always freaking out. He's freaking out. This will end badly. For who? By the way, it's been ending badly for the American people every day for the last fucking 40 years. Now it might end badly for you and your friends. They don't want you in the Hamptons, folks. They don't want you at their country club. And then he goes, well, I voted for Biden. I voted my values over my pocketbook. Just want to make sure everybody knows that I voted for Biden. You know, um, it is really interesting to watch this all unfold. And these guys are coming out and they're crying. I mean, they're, they're tearing up at the idea of this, at the thought of people exercising the freedom to buy securities on an app like Robinhood is making these people cry because they care about you. Remember that. They're, they're, you're making money and they're crying <laughs> because they care about you. 
It would be like if you walked in with a winning scratch off and you won 30 grand and everyone you told started crying. You're going, this isn't the way it should work. This, you, what about the fundamentals? What? Well, what about necessary market functions? Right. What? They manipulate prices all the time. They inflate things. They short. They do everything, okay? They care nothing about rules, laws. All they care about is winning and having more money than you. So when you start to fuck up their money, they get on CNBC and cry and say that this is bad for the system. It's not going to end badly. Uh, and just be honest about it. Tell people why it's not going to end badly. Tell people why it's going to end real bad. Just look at CNBC. Look at the host of CNBC and go, we'll do another 9-11. Straight up tell them, they go, we're prepared to go to full way. We'll release more pandemics. We're working with somebody right now, and we're going to do another. We're going to do a real coronavirus soon. It's going to be bad. Not that this one's not real, but they're like, we're going to do the plague. The next thing we're going to try is the plague. I'm on Clubhouse now, which is a new app that uh, I have invites to, and none of you are getting invites. Uh, Clubhouse is an invite-only app. It's drop-in audio chat. It's a social network that's based on your voice where people around the world come to network, talk to each other, have open conversations about the issues of the day. And I was sponsored by Michael Gruen, who is a uh, Bitcoin guy. Also, he owns the uh, Sway House, which is a TikTok house in Los Angeles. And he's a very funny guy who uh, is a very successful entrepreneur. And he brought me on. And everybody on there, not everybody, but a lot of people on there are entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, investors, people that uh, have come up with very successful apps, really, really successful people in the tech space. And a lot of the rooms are very fun. We goof around. They bring me on. I'm like, you know, they, they invite me as a speaker. I'm a comedian. I throw in a funny line every few minutes. But reality, I listen. I listen. And some of the conversations are very interesting and informative, and some of them are terrifying. Because you're meeting your captors. Truly, you're, you're, you're getting into a, they're running the world. They're going to run the world. They're going to win. When they talk, they have this very cold Blooded, like, you know, some of them say, well, you know, we have to put guardrails up online, don't we? And you're like, God, they're going to win. It's terrifying, but they're going to win. But it really is for a guy like me, I'm listening to my cat. It would be like if there was an app in the 1800s where slaves could ask questions to their masters. So you're shackled in a barn and you get to go on an app and go, what do we think tomorrow? Is it field tomorrow? And they go, well, production has been very low, and we do blame the weather, but a lot of that is because we feel that the manpower is lacking. So we are going to get in the field tomorrow, and then we're going to try to streamline that, and we're going to really try to cover all of our bases. I think what is really important is that we build an infrastructure, and then you're sitting there as a slave, and you go, yeah, that sounds good. And one day, I'll be a master. I'm going to own a plantation one day, and I'll shackle people up in a barn and tell them what they can and can't say and how they can say it. It is a little terrifying on there. And it's fun, and it's funny, but when you hear these people talk, um, they love the pandemic. I mean, they, they're, they're gushing. One guy goes, there's going to be a pandemic now every five years. It's just the way the world is now. It's just the way the world is. Everyone's going to have to wear masks forever. We were sharing way too many germs before. Everybody... Stay in your house, stay online, and use our app. Use our app. The world is now different. And all the things that can make the world livable, coincidentally, are all the things we've invested in. Isn't that nice? Don't go outside. There's new strains. Every day is another strain. The Andromeda strain. They're all coming from Brazil, South from Africa. Africa. Yeah, it's coming. They're all coming. The strains won't end. And then these people on this app are talking about the new world that everyone will live in, which will be digital forever. It is the dystopian nightmare that you feared. They are preparing it for you as you sleep. Truly, they are. And not to sound too crazy about it, but when you hear these people talk and they're, they're, they're not emotional, it's very cold, it's calculated. They're just like, this is how it is now. We're living in the, the world of pandemics. We're going to get one all the time. 
They're going to be here. And in order to live with this new world, we're going to have to distance. We're going to have to use this, our infrastructure that we've built. This is what you have to use. You have to be online all the time using our apps to make a living, to do anything. And by the way, if you get a little wacky, we're going to delete you. Delete. And where are you going to go? There's nowhere for you to go. There's nowhere for you to go because you're going to get another strain. Don't walk into an office. The strain's coming. Oh, that's the strain from Pakistan. Ooh. Oh. It's the Pakistani strain. So you have no other option. You know, create your own Twitter. People went on Parler. They said, ah, fuck that. Well, you can make money in the market if you want. Buy stocks. Ah, fuck that. We'll turn that off. And pretty soon, and it's already happening, it's like, you know, we'll just start deleting you, your ability to, to earn a living if we so choose. This is enforced compliance. And the guys that are on the other side of that, guys like Eric Weinstein, who's on Clubhouse all the time, who's a really brilliant guy. He talks, you know, 19, 20 hours a day on Clubhouse every day. And, and it's still not enough. You know, it's like Tulsi Gabbard was in a room with him and somebody would ask her a question and he'd they'd be like, Tulsi, what's it like running a presidential campaign? And Weinstein jumps in. He's like, here's what Tulsi learned. You're like, wait, what? But he's he is an ally, right? Eric Weinstein yeah. actually doesn't want... Yeah. This, and you hope that he wins, but I don't know if he will because the other side seems to be very uh, competent. And they seem to be, and this is just listening on this app, which I spend three or four hours on a night because it's fucking fascinating. And I do a little joke every now and then. Everybody goes, oh, Tim's a comedian. Isn't that funny? Uh, but they, I'm a roach in there. They look at me like a roach. I'm like a jester that they bring out like, hey, make everyone laugh. And then we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the type of shackles that we get that's going to go right around the arm. <laughs> Yeah, we got a good one. We're saving money on metal. So the chain, the chain, we're switching from metal. We're going to do an elastic chain. It's like a polymer. So you feel like you can go somewhere, but it snaps you back. So, and that's what they talk about. And then every now and then I come in and I make a joke and I'm like, you know, and I'm like, well, what about a polymer chain? And they go, <laughs> but it, to, to listen to them, it's, it's, it's a little uh, disturbing. It's a little disturbing how into it they are in terms of like, you know, this pandemic. There's no end in sight and never will be. There's never going to be an end. And again, it's not this like vast conspiracy. This is how these fuckers make their money. This is how they're going to make their money and they're going to pretend that they're the greatest people that have ever lived and they've ushered humanity into this new era of not being able to leave your home or speak. And it's for your own good. They're crying on CNBC because they're worried about you because they care about you. You're not going to be able to speak or buy stocks or leave your house because they care. Don't ever forget that. This is wrapped up in altruism in a way that like nothing ever. Finance guys are like cuddly care bears compared to the tech people. Finance guys are like, yeah, we're here to rob you. They're, they're clumsy. They're idiots. This fat fuck on CNBC is crying. Yeah. He's clearly a goon. You can identify him and go goon. They wear pinstripe suits. I mean, they might as well be the Monopoly guy. You could see them coming a mile away, these finance guys. Or even though they're in their jeans now, these hedge fund douchebags with their fucking aviators, you, you still can see them and know. But the tech people really are utopians. They are creating a new world, and they just might let you live in it. They just might let you live in that world. For a little bit until you get visibly upset, you know, and that's when they're going to have to get you out of there. That's when they're going to have to open the trap door and you, whoo, poof, done. And you hear that when somebody said to me, and this was a big, big person who said, we need to put guardrails up online. I get a little heart flutter, a little palpitation. I'm like, what do you mean by that? And then later on, a guy comes in and goes, listen, we're going to have another pandemic every five years. So we're never going to be able to go back to living the way we used to live. We shared way too many germs. Work is going to be exclusively from home. You're going to have to use these uh, applications. This is the way we're going to do things now. This is the wave of the future. Friends are gone unless they're digital. I mean, it's really wild uh, to, to hit, you know, the vaccines are coming. Uh, and some of them we need without a doubt. But... They're coming. There'll be 12 of them. You won't know which one to get. Everyone, there'll be different vaccines, different vaccine for every season. It'll be like fashion week with needles. What's the spring line look like? You know, 
Are you getting a summer vaccine? What's the sum? You know, Gucci will start making them soon. They'll have vaccines from everybody. And, and that's it. And public health policy and, and tech policy is all going to be fused together. And it's all going to be to help you. It's going to be, it's all going to be for you. That's all. And there's going to be a cartel of companies that you have to do business with to exist on this planet. And if you choose not to, uh, and I remember when like, you know, I would talk to people and this was years ago and we've even talked to them on the show where they'd go, no, what's coming is fully autonomous cities where everything is delivered to you via drone. You, you, you don't really need to leave. If you leave, there's like a park you can go to. Uh, that'll be monitored. There'll be cameras everywhere. You're going to be listened to. Uh, the Alexa will just be the beginning. Every single uh, appliance in your house will be a smart appliance to listen to everything you say. They'll they'll use that information to market things to you, which will be delivered by drone. And then if you go on, let you know there'll be social credit scores similar to China. Uh, are you a team player or are you disgruntled? Are you antisocial? And what the line of that is just they're going to keep moving it. They're going to keep moving the line of is of what's considered antisocial, what's considered a problem. And it's just going, it'll stifle all art, which is already dead. Let's be very honest. There's, there's very few things out there that you go, God, is that good? God, was that good? It's going to be what you see now. TikTok, people dancing, you know, buy the merch. I'm going to dance in a stairwell, in a mansion. And that's it. That's what you're going to get. You'll get movies that are little more than SpawnCon. You're going to just get SpawnCon, you know? So, yeah, it'll be vaccine SpawnCon. You'll just watch your favorite Avenger get vaccinated. Even the Hulk needs a shot. Don't worry. It's coming. Folks, being on this app for three fucking days, it's coming tomorrow. It's not coming in six months or a year. It's here. You just don't know it yet. I'm telling you right now. If you sell your stuff online, you're definitely in the right business. Most people are shopping online because there are new strains every day. Have you heard? That means a lot of orders coming in and a lot of orders you'll need to ship out fast. That's why online sellers like you need ShipStation. No matter how much you sell, ShipStation makes it super easy to manage and ship all your orders from your sales channels faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. You can import orders from any sales channel, ship with any carrier, access discounted shipping rates, automate just about any shipping task. You'll spend a lot less time on shipping and a lot more time on growing your business, the things you need to do, marketing, you know, all this stuff that you need to do as a successful business. You know you're not making any money in the market right now, so you might as well start selling your shit. No matter what you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own app, website, ShipStation funnels all your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. You'll even get access to amazing discounts with major carriers, UPS, FedEx, USPS. Easily compare carriers and ship the best solution every time. With ShipStation, small businesses can now access the same rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. It's so important if you're, if you're an online retailer to do this stuff. This is essential if you're a small business. And by the way, you get two months free. T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. 60-day free trial. Two months free. Stress-free shipping. No hassle. That's 60 days if you're a starting business, small business. You need 60 days free. And that's important. And you don't have to worry about anything other than making your business the best it can be. So again, you go to ShipStation.com, S-H-I-P-S-T-A-T-I-O-N, ShipStation.com, code T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N, 60-day free trial. I can't say enough about sheath underwear. Everybody loves it. Everyone that has it loves it. It's nice. They have a flexible pillowcase for your junk. It's literally all I wear now. They are the best. You have to try it yourself. Give them a Google. Do some research on the inventor, Robert Patron. Is he a patron? Robert Patron. Check the story. It's interesting and even somewhat inspiring. This is the guy mm -hmm. who was in the military. That's right. And he served our country. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. It's pretty damn cool when you have somebody who is a veteran mm -hmm. who then gets into another business. Yeah. And I don't care. I mean, listen, I'm not going to start relitigating everything that might have happened over there. What is a civilian, really? What, what does a civilian mean? Isn't anyone a threat? I'm not going to ask why you got out of the military. <laughs> I'm not going to ask how we got out of the military. It's, a, it's a, who cares? I'm going to start going nuts. 
I'm not going to ask if some of the things he did were leaked out by Edward Snowden. I'm not going to get into that. doesn't matter. He served the country, mm-hmm. and now he makes underwear, and the underwear is good. Yeah. So it, it does not matter, you know, what, what, whatever happened, whatever he was involved in. doesn't matter. I don't need to. I'm not a perfect person. Are you a perfect person? No. 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 That's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure this guy did everything on the up and up. You know, you throw in a couple of beers with the down with the guys from Blackwater. Maybe you go into the town. You raise a little hell. Maybe you raise a little hell over there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a rat. I'm not somebody who's gonna. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. Doesn't matter. Move on, as he clearly has. It's great. Here we go. Me ranting about my thoughts and feelings point is that I love this underwear and they pay me to promote them, but they could have left after my last ad read because it because they didn't because it was funny. Right. Cause that's here's the reality. Mm-hmm. They don't mind what I say. Right. They're that's what we the like. Show. They're fans of comedy. Support them because of that. You know what I mean? Who cares? That it may or may not be run by a genocidal maniac. Like Colonel Kurtz from Apocalypse Now. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Women Women and children? They can carry bombs like everyone else. Do you get that? A toddler can be as devastating... As a as a as a a, a regular man, mm-hmm. so they got to go. That's all. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. This guy served his country. Did he lock Chelsea Manning in a cell? Maybe, but it's not my business what he did because she's a rat. She ratted. He had a couple of beers, they took the guns, and they just fired into a crowd to just keep people on their toes. Sheathunderwear.com. Sheath, S-H-E-A-T-H-U-N-D-E-R-W-E-A-R.com. Sheathunderwear.com. Use code TIM to save 20%. You use the code TIM, you save 20%. Everything you see now is so insane. Pregnant people, not pregnant women, pregnant people. Tweet, a man can't get pregnant. You'll lose your account. You will lose your account. You're a turf. You're a biological essentialist. I'm telling you right now, this disease has is, is gotten to the brain. It's spread. It's like a doctor sitting you down and going, the disease has spread. There's not going to be any let up, really. And I was like so taken back by how cold and calculated um, a lot of these people are in these apps and how they really truly believe that they're doing the right thing for you. They truly believe that. They actually believe it. It's not like a bunch of Wall Street guys in the room going, yeah, we're getting over. Right. It's true believers. It's a cult. And they believe that the world should look a certain way. And if you fit into that, you fit into that. And if you do not fit into that, you are going away. You're going to go away. And, you know, I mean, this, these articles come out. We've talked about it with Whitney Webb. But, you know, where they go, listen, you're going to own nothing. You're going to be happy. You're not going to own a car. You won't own a house. Good luck. You might not own stock. You're not going to own a business. You won't own your own body soon because they'll tell you what has to go into that, what's allowed, what's not allowed. Um, And this is the future. And I've never been more convinced of it than spending time on that. And the app is fun. It's fun hearing how it's going to happen. Isn't that sick? It's actually fun hearing how they're going to get you. It's amusing. It's better than TV. Stop watching Ozark. Listen to your captors. They're telling you. They are telling you. You don't need the next season. Oh, but to Marty and Wendy figure out, who cares? These people are telling you how they're going to shackle you to a floorboard. Listen to them. I'm telling you. 
Don't make the mistake. Don't make the mistake of ignoring them when they talk. Don't ignore what is going to be the future of your life and your children's life. I wish it wasn't fun because it is fun going, huh, that's a good idea. How are you going to remove all my freedom little by little? And I'll thank you for it. I'll thank, thank you. Thank you for this. That's what they want. Elizabeth Warren wants you to thank her for tell, telling you you can't make any money. <laughs> she wants you to come and she, say, thank you for protecting me from prosperity. Thank you for protecting me from earning a dollar. Thank God I was about to earn $40,000 and maybe pay down some student debt and help my mother out. Thank Christ you got in the way of that. Hoof. I mean, that's truly where we're at now as a country. But that clubhouse app, man, it's a lot of fun, except our friend keeps ruining it. We have this friend, Alex, who keeps ruining it. He jumps into every room. You got to get invited to these rooms. And I want new friends. I want to be friends with the captors. I want to be friends with them. These, some of these people are so young. They're in their early 20s. They started a hedge fund at like four years old. Oh, yeah, very wealthy. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Instagram picture is like them tongue kissing Joe Biden. These people are connected. I want those. Them, I want to be friends with them. I want to be friends with the captors. So every now and then they could they could let me out of the cage and I'll do a dance and then they bring me right back in. And I go, can I can I stay on the property tonight? They go, not tonight, back in the cage, but we really enjoyed the show. And I go, okay, thank you. Because you'll say thank you. Thank you. And they go, please vaccinate Tim on the way back. <laughs> so he forgets everything that happened. But I'm trying to make friends. And then Alex keeps ruining it by jumping in and not shutting his goddamn mouth. Shut your mouth, Alex. I'm known a little bit on this thing because I'm a comedian, so like sometimes they let me in the rooms and they wouldn't know who I am. Some of them know who I am because I've done Rogan a bunch. They're all like, we want Rogan to be on Clubhouse. I spoke to him. He's like, I'm busy, man. Fuck that, man. Yeah, you're never going to get, he's never going to be on Clubhouse, dummy. But like we're talking to Tulsi on there yeah, and we're yeah. talking to Eric Weinstein. It's a lot of fun. It's the future. Yeah. And it's fun, but some of those rooms in there, you're like, whoo, it's going to get interesting going forward. It will. But I wish we didn't have someone ruining it all the time. As a side note, my aunt is not thrilled uh, with the direction of the show. I don't know why, but I've heard that from several family members. She's not thrilled with the direction we've gone in. I don't know. I don't know what upset her. Did she not like the ads? I don't get it. We're also moving to Austin, Texas. Yes. I don't know if we've said that. We're leaving. We're gone. We're done. We tried. We gave it, we gave it the old college try. You know? Here, I mean, I, haven't, I didn't go to college, but I gave it a try. And everyone I know, every smart person I know, every big uh, YouTuber, uh, I talk to them, and a lot of them are out. A lot of them are leaving. Uh, you know, pick the reason. There's 25. We wanted to stay here to collaborate with people. Yes. They're not going to be here. Costs a lot of money to live in the state. Cost of living is high. Tax burden is high. There's less and less to do. You know, what are we going to do? Got to go. Got to go. And now, hearing being in Clubhouse for a few, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I could wake up tomorrow and have no career. They could do, I could wake up tomorrow and just, you know, Log on to everything and be like, he's done. They might do it after this. They might be like, we let him in and then he's fucking that mother, fat, fat fuck. He said some things. So I don't know. But being in a career like the one that I have and knowing what's coming down the pike makes me want to go down to a state where I can live simpler, less expensive, rock out as much as I can, make a lot of funny videos, make a lot of, uh, do a lot of fun podcasts, go out and do live shows, maybe make longer form stuff. And, uh, you know, until, uh, you know, they turn the lights out. We don't know when they're going to turn the lights out, but they're going to turn the lights out, they will. you know? And I don't know when it's going to be. I'm hoping it's in five years. I hope I get a little run and then maybe we'll have live. We'll be able to do live. You, you really have to come see us live. And if you have 12 vaccinations, you'll be able to sit in a room and then hear people speak. I don't know what's going to happen. But I mean, eventually everything will be a pejorative that can get you thrown offline. I mean, if you call someone fat, they'll go bullying out. What? 
That's what's going to happen. No matter what you say, call someone a woman. Misgender someone by mistake. Out. Out. What's amazing about these tech people is they're all very rich and they're all they're all very invested in the idea that they're the good guys. So in order to be the good guy when you're making all of the money in a, in a society with a lot of inequality, and I'm not even, I'm not a Marxist. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to make money, but I'm saying the cognitive dissonance you have to have to make a billion dollars and then have your head hit the pillow and go, I'm the good person here. Like I'm part, I'm a force for good. In order to be a force for good, you have to clean up everything else around you, which is our people being mean. Don't be mean. Yes, I have a billion dollars and you don't have shoes. <laughs> but don't be mean. That's what it is. So they're basically like, we're the, they're, we're the hall monitor. We're a task force. It's like if the hall monitor of your school showed up in a Bentley and walked into school with gold teeth and a chain and stood in the hall and, and, and your school was like a school that was falling apart and nobody and the teachers had to spend money uh, on school supplies because they didn't get support from the administration. And after my little rant about teachers, thank you for the DMs. Uh, but it's like that type of school and the kids are on a school lunch program and everyone's broke and busted and shot. And your hall monitor shows up in a Rolls Royce and just gets out and like you and your buddy are teasing each other, walking down the hall, you know, Maybe you and him, maybe he's Chinese and, and you're uh, black and you're, you're making fun of each other, okay? Because that's what people do. They make fun of each other. And kids aren't good comedians. They're not me. So they do base level comedy, you know? And also, by the way, if you continue to do that comedy, you can make $100 million. So uh, they do base level comedy. You're black, you're Asian, whatever. And they say it, you know. <laughs> and then the hall monitor goes, what the fuck did you say? I go, dude, it's my friend. We're going to class. And she's like... The fuck you are going to class. <laughs> and then you go, hey, not for nothing, but you've got a Rolls Royce and you've got gold teeth and like, we're fucked here. The school barely exists. The teachers are overworked. Nobody has any goddamn money. We can't even afford books. Our parents are on opioids. Can you let us kid around from class to class, which we don't even fucking learn anything in anyway? Can you let us kid around in the hall? No. And then she, he, or they gets in their roles and drives to their mansion, puts their head on their fucking 10,000 thread count, whatever, cotton sheet, and goes, whew. Thank God I fought the good fight today. That's what the tech world is. They're all hall monitors in a fucking crumbling school, and they're telling everybody that's walking around they can't have any goddamn fun. Now, I'm not saying you should be able to threaten to kill people and burn down houses online, though I have. Uh, I'm not saying that. But I think that you should have the freedom to explore ideas. And uh, that's the example that comes to mind. Because that's what they feel like. They feel like the, 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 par the parental monitor at the school dance. Where they're like, well, these kids don't know what's going on. They, these kids, if they were worthy of making their own decisions, they'd have a billion dollars. That's what that hall monitor looked at those kids and went, if you could decide what you could say to each other and what you guys could handle, you'd have a Rolls Royce outside. But shut out. You're broke. So you clearly don't know what the hell's going on. I'll have to come in and tell you because I care about you. And now we've kicked you out of the school and now you get to go live on the street because I care. Because God forbid somebody else heard that little exchange you had in the hall and killed themselves because they heard that. So we're protecting that phantom metaphorical situation that hasn't happened. And we're going to destroy your very actual life to protect from the idea that someone somewhere might one day kill themselves because of what you said. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. There's there. I can't really start talking about, I'll be this. They will kick me off this soon, probably within a few weeks, but I just want to get a few weeks because it is fun. But, and I'm not, I would never disclose what someone said in a private thing. And I, no, want, right, I, and right, I right. will never, in a private uh, 
uh, private. I would never disclose what they say. Although I think I have on this show now four times, but not who they are and really not their exact quotes. Sure. I've you know, removed thes and ands and ors because I get it. It's a closed circle. Mm. I'm, I'm probably so off this, but <laughs> what, what are you going to do? What am I going to be a venture capitalist? Come on. Um, yeah, it's like, I just look at, uh, and there are people that don't agree with these people, by the way, on there. And there is a movement in tech that they don't want this. And there are good guys. Just like there are people in the CIA that's like, let's not fuck the kids. Maybe we shouldn't just go into countries and, I don't know, overthrow governments that that country elected. And maybe we shouldn't do that. And then those people, of course, you know, go away. They disappear. But there is a movement intact for people that want, like, more freedom. And they, they, they understand comedy, and they like comedians, and they want fun. And as long as you're not really trying to hurt somebody and doxing them and threatening them and, you know, putting their information out there and organizing an online mob to go kill them or whatever, which, again, I didn't do with the fucking people in the desert. Enough. Um, we know that there's instances where, you know, you can't commit crimes online, right? You can't go like, let's go kill Betty. We know that. But there's also this huge gray area with all that stuff. And there are people that, from the Weinstein crew, I think Peter Thiel and all those guys, and yes, 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 Whitney Webb, yes, they're probably CIA shows. But you just got to choose your demons, honey. Like, I love her to death, but, like, you got to choose your demons. You, what are we doing here? You got to choose your demon. It's never not going to be a demon. I know all of you like to live in this world where demons don't run everything. Good. Go terraform and maybe do that on another planet. But in this world, you better choose the ones you like. Better choose the ones you like. That's it. You can be a Bill Gates guy. I was, I, hey, Sheldon Adelson worked for me. He's like, casinos, we're going to kill you, but come to the casino. <laughs> Bill Gates is like, we're going to kill you, but you can't even leave home. I'm like, at least let's go to the casino. Can we go to the casino? I don't know much about Sheldon. I know he also did horrible things. Don't type out a long YouTube call. Sheldon Adelson actually owned private prison. I know Sheldon Adelson, you know, but it is a pick your demons thing here. So I do think that Peter Thiel, who's like a gay Silicon Valley, like unwoke dude, right? Yeah, yeah. Seems to be maybe, maybe the interests align more with his clique than the blue haired tech. I don't know. I mean, it's scary. And then the white woman is very scary on there. The successful white woman. Is there a scarier uh, uh, archetype of human being than the billionaire white bitch? You're going to go to jail. They're putting you in jail. The billionaire white woman who's like, you know, it's just very important to me that we're really, you know, margin, you know, you know, elevating marginalized voices. And I want to connect with young entrepreneurs of color, female entrepreneurs of color. And I just, I just really think it's so important that we create a space and an environment that allows everybody to thrive. And in order to do that, I think we have to use every tool at our disposal, you know, including putting guardrails up online and possibly genocide. Thank you. Is there anyone more terrifying than the successful white woman? I'm truly, I mean, the aggrieved successful white woman, the woman with billions of dollars who's, gonna fix it oh god oh god i mean i listen to this i fall asleep to this app every night so i just i just i just every night i, I curl up in bed and i just put the phone on uh the pillow next to me and i just fall asleep every night to just the sound of a white woman who wants me in jail because you know what we're really thinking about is building an infrastructure and you know enhancing the user experience and you know, in order to do that, of course, what we have to do is, you know, you know, basically cleanse. And you're like, you start waking up. You're like, wait, what? What? You know, we just have to, like, make sure that we elevate the right voices. And you're like, oh, uh-oh. And listen, I'm sure they're all lovely people. I'm sure they're all lovely people. But it is. It's not. It, 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 in my mind, it's going to a bad place. But there are people that don't want it to go to as bad a place as you think it's going to go. But see, this is the thing. This is what people don't realize. If you shit on people for 40 years, okay, in every imaginable way, lie to them, 
you know, their wages don't go up. They don't have health care. They can't afford to put their kids through college. Their communities are being hollowed out. Factories are leaving. Everybody's on heroin. Things are worse every year, and yet things are somehow more expensive. That's what California is like. Things are worse every year, and yet phenomenally more expensive every year. It's cigarettes. We're running a country that is Marlboro Lights. Every year, people die. The statistics are more and more clear. And every year they go, how about $17? You go, what? That's California. It's a cigarette. It's just you know you shouldn't have it. Yeah. It's good. You like it. But every year they go, what about 15 You go, I guess. I guess I'll pay. I guess I'll give you a $20, buy cigarettes and lighter, and get a dollar back. That makes sense. Do that seven times a week. But that's, you know, where we're at. And it's, uh, and, and, and so you can't shit on people 40 years and expect there's these little rebellions that people getting angry. Some of them go full QAnon, put the horns on, storm the Capitol. Some of them go, okay, well, I'm just going to go on parlor. And they go, well, fuck you, you can't do that. Some of them go, okay, well, let's make a little money in the market. Let's try to make money. Let's try to take some money. Where is AMC right now, by the way? Where AMC, is it? AMC stock. Got to worry about my own position. Oh, you're up right now, Tim. How am I up? Because you bought at 898. I'm up. Hold the line. Hold the goddamn line. We're going to have the CEO of Wall Street Bets on, unfortunately. The CEO, no. What? Well, what is he? Um, so I looked into him. His name's Jamie. Apparently, he was excommunicated from r slash Wall Street Bets, apparently. A lot of people DM'd me that, that you were interacting with that account. So I don't know if he is accepted by that community or if they'd be mad if we were talking to him. I don't know, but we missed it anyway because the Whitney Cummings podcast went long. Yeah. Where I sat down yeah. with Whitney for two hours. We patched. We had some issues. We kind of hashed it out. Um, you know, and I love Whitney and want the best for her. I'm, you know, and I, and I care about her deeply, and that's why I'm leaving the state. Now I love her to death, but she's gonna come down and visit. We got to get the fuck out of here, man. I'm starting to feel like the, I mean, we we just California feels like the house after the party. You wake up and there's just cigarettes everywhere, and it smells dank. Mm -hmm. You know, your friend's mother is just like, "You want eggs?" You're like, "No, get me out of here. Let's go. Let's go get a bacon, egg, and cheese." cup of coffee, and a pack of Luckies. And that is Austin to me, yeah. <laughs> even though they probably don't have. I'm a little, and listen, I'm not excited about Austin. I loathe Austin. I abominate Austin, truly. I mean, and I, and I mean this with my heart. Uh, that's not a city for me. You know, 40-year-old failed musicians scooping ice cream, stoned at 3 p.m., dressed like toddlers, is never going to, it's not going to be for me. Just isn't. Sorry, I know everyone loves it, but maybe I'll grow to love it. There's parts of it I like. I didn't like this, and I made it work. Um, and New York, which I love, don't get me started on New York. So I don't love anything that I don't hate, you know? Mm. All my friends, I kind of, there's something about them I really love, and then there's something about them I like, don't like. Those are a lot of the relationships I have. I like really love them. And then I also, there's something about them like I don't like, you know? Uh, and that's, you know, and sometimes it's just as simple as the fact that they refuse to fuck me and give me all their money. But I still feel that quality to be objectionable in some of my friends. Um, like what I, what I like about Ben is that I love Ben. He's like my best friend. But also what I don't like about Ben is that he's not good at golf. And I am really good at golf. And he's not a good golfer and never was. That's what bothers me about him. Now, obviously, that's funny because Ben was a very good golfer, and I don't golf at all. But the reality is Ben knows if I put my mind to it, I could be the greatest golfer in the world. And maybe I'll do that. I'll quit comedy so I could just be the greatest golfer of all time. And he has to stand on the sidelines and just... While I walk up 18 at Augusta, and the crowd roars my name, they roar my name, and I just walk there and I hold the club up... <laughs> And I just have those khakis and that polo shirt and everybody's just happy. And you said golfers are boring. Very boring. I, I had a guy come over the other day. We didn't do anything, you know, but he was just so boring. Mm. He, he golfs. He's just a golf. He's just a boring golfer. He just sat outside and just, they, they're nothing. They're literally just, they just want to watch that little bull go into the hole. And they just love Jesus and Donald Trump. And Trump, yeah. And Trump. They love Jesus and Trump. Yeah, yeah. They just want to watch the ball go into the hole. And I get it because, listen, you know, you got to be good at something, right? So 
We'll see. But so I'm up right now. AMC, hold the line. And we're going heavy. You got to go in heavy. Not now. It's up. Buy the dips. Fuck these people. Fuck Elizabeth Warren. Where's GameStop? Oh, it's it's doing okay. Three twenty. It's doing okay. Do I go into GameStop now? No. I think you buy a dip. I gotta buy the dip. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is when it hits like four hundred, they halt trading, and then it's like it. That's like panic. illegal. It has to be. That's right? illegal. You know what else is illegal? Killing uh, John F. Kennedy. <laughs> that didn't really stop. But it's illegal. They're halting the trading. I mean, I just don't get it, folks. It's falling now. No? Uh, we're going up right now. We're going up. Going up. Ben is now in the stocks. He, like, thinks he's an investment, like a financial advisor. And he's been trading stocks secretly for how long without letting me know? Like three weeks. Yeah, and he's not letting me know because he wants to, I think he wants to leave the show. And he wants to create uh, an infrastructure. We have to create an infrastructure. And he wants to... Uh, make enough money now in the in capital markets where he just doesn't have to mm. do this show anymore because he truly, really hates me. <laughs> That's the thing about him that none of you understand is that every day he sits here and he just wishes he had the guts to plunge a kitchen knife into my throat. He's heard me talk more than anyone. He really has. Think about that. You guys hear me talk an hour a week, two hours a week if you're on the Patreon. Uh, ben just hears me talk for hours and hours, and at, to a point where it's like, not only I'm sure is it not fun, the grating nature of my voice has to just, it's just, like he drives home, his little Tesla, and then he's probably just like, fuck that guy. But you're excited about Austin because you're going to see your family. Stoked. And a lot of your friends live there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got family outside Dallas. It's, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. You go down there and golf. Go down there and retire. Ben thinks he's going down there to retire. He's going to work. How's Nokia? It's been really going down today. This is the end of the day Friday, right? Mm -hmm. This is the market at, on Friday. We're recording this. is going out Saturday. And then we'll, we'll see what happens, baby. Hopefully they can get above board here. I hope so, too. I just want to know if I should just start dumping money into other things on the dip. Is there... There's, I can buy after hours, right? No. Uh, with TD Ameritrade, I don't know if you can. Interesting. Yeah, fuck Robin Hood. By the way, get get my Twitter up. Mm -hmm. This is something I found out. This is going to blow your minds. You want your mind blown? Do you want your mind blown? What is that, by the way? What? Oh, yeah, I tweeted uh, Elizabeth Warren. Okay, keep going down. Okay. Oh, by the way, that guy, Josh Brown, CNBC, wears the fake business. Isn't oh, that sick. nice? Good for him. There he goes. Get Go down. You're going to lose your mind here. Watch this. This is a fact. The CEO of Robinhood is Ghislaine Maxwell's son. That's real? Did you know that? No. That's Ghislaine Maxwell's son. Why is that funny? Well, he's Russian, right? Correct. Well, his name, his name's not going to be Maxwell. That's legit. That's legit? That's legit. I'm saying it's legit because I care about you. <laughs> you see that? I care about you so much, I almost want to start crying. That's why I'm sharing this information with you. Because I care about you so much mm. that I want you to believe this. They do look alike. It, that's how believable it is. I mean, it's, it's so believable yeah. because they do look alike. Now it's probably not the it's probably not the case. And it kind of looks like Jeffrey and Gislaine like kind of crossed. Do you think that Gislaine is trading in prison? You think she's on the phone with a broker? I want to buy GameStop. I feel so sad here. I'm in jail. I want to buy AMC. I love the movies. I want to get in heavy to GameStop and Nokia. Listen. I want to go against the rich too. My whole life I've been serving the rich. I want to go against, I want to get a part of a populist revolution. I want to buy Dogecoin. Tell everyone about Dogecoin, Ben. So Dogecoin's an altcoin. Um, it, it's a risky investment because it's not like real. Didn't it go up 800%? 
It did, yeah. I, <laughs> I sold early. I, I shouldn't have. But Elon Musk tweeted about Bitcoin today, and it went up. Yeah, yeah, and he put it in his bio. Get so in the game, folks! Elon's leading the charge on this whole thing. He really is. Well, because, you know, the one thing about Elon Musk is that he's poor, and he understands the struggles of poor people, and that's why I'm kidding. No, he's kind of a populist now, right? Yeah, him and Chamath. Uh, Chamath, uh, what's this guy? Yeah, yeah, this guy. They're they're kind of leading the charge with the Bitcoin stuff. Yeah, listen, this Facebook and Robinhood app are the same. They both trick you into thinking you were the customer, but in fact, you are the product and your data is the asset. These assets are then sold to their true customers who pay the money and always at your expense, stop being tricked, which I think is like Citadel owns all the data. Now, Citadel's like, right. uh, yeah, they own all the data from Robinhood. So you're trading on Robinhood and Citadel's going, what are they buying? How are they buying it? You know, so that is the real asset, the real commodity. And that's interesting. That's why Robinhood is owned really, truly by these big money players. And the Robinhood guy's a billionaire too, but like the institutions are who he has. That's where his loyalty is. It is not to his customers. It is to the people that own that app and get his the information, the data that he sells them. Right. And then when you understand that, you understand how this whole thing works. And if you have trouble understanding, you just got to go up the line until somebody's in the woods with a goat mask. Because that's really the way it is. So you just got, you go, but I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. And then, and then it's like, oh, here's a photo of you at Jeffrey Epstein's birthday. What do you think about this? You go, well, I'm concerned about the market instability. And I'm concerned about, so up the line, they just go right into blackmail if they need to. Just go into hardcore blackmail. But you don't even have to do that anymore because people are just so terrified of being ruined financially, being on the road. Because this, this will die down, right? Because all these hedge fund guys, the way they talk, to, they go, listen, this is going to end. This will end. And when it does, you just it's like you're a kid and the bully picks on you, but your older brother's there that day. And then the bully is like, hey, man, one day we're going to catch you without him. So at the end of the day, it's like this motherfucker knows. He's like, hey, man, this is going to end one day. You're not going to be the folk hero of Reddit if that's, which, you know, he didn't choose that route. But like, if you go that route, okay, but just realize that one day we're going to catch you without your boys. We're going to catch you without your avatars. And we're going to get you. And that's, that's probably the way it, it happens. I imagine that's the way it happens. That guy's threatened. He's threatened. They bring him in a room, and a guy comes in a room uh, in, a, in a goat mask with a cloak and goes, there's two ways we can do this. You can shut down trading on these particular securities, mm. or we can literally, at our next seance, roast you on a barbecue spit in the woods. And this guy goes, okay. And also, he's Russian. He knows how it is. He knows what they do. They poison you. He knows. He's a Russian. They get it. They know. People have long memories over there. Lucy Nicotine Company is founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. They've got a gum that comes in a couple of really cool flavors, three of them, wintergreen cinnamon, pomegranate. They also have a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine and a cherry ice flavor. They actually taste great. It's convenient and discreet. Products can be enjoyed anywhere, on flights, at work, on the go, or even the gym. You don't have to be like this moron vaping all the time. You don't have to be me having an occasional Marby light. You can get out there. It's 2020. Get rid of your cigarettes. Unplug your vape. Throw out your dip. Get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. This is a real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple. It's a great way to support the show, and it'll get you off nicotine forever. Tim Dillon Show listeners, go to lucy.co, promo code Tim. Lucy.co, promo code Tim, and get 20% off all products, including gum and lozenges. That's lucy.co, promo code Tim at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Lucy.co, be sure to use the promo code T-I-M. You owe it to yourself to make 2021 your year. It's time to change things up. Start with some self-care. Ugh. Start with Hawthorne. Hawthorne is a premium tailored personal care brand that's making it easier for guys to feel and smell your best. Okay? You take a little quiz. They're like, what's your favorite drink? How do you like to spend the night out? Do you smoke? What are you doing? The products I got are amazing. 
I got skincare products. I got products that make me smell good. If you want to upgrade your self-care routine, Hawthorne is a fun and convenient way to get super high-quality products tailored specifically for your needs. Aftershave, things like that, creams. Hawthorne even takes the risk out of it by giving you free shipping on your order and returns. And if you don't like your products, they'll even retail them for you based on your feedback. Do what I did. Take Hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co. Use promo code TIM. Get 10% off your first purchase. Hawthorne.co, promo code TIM. Hawthorne.co, promo code T-I-M. But get on Clubhouse because it is a lot of fun, and I hope I get to stay on it because I don't think I've disclosed too much. This is just what it is. These are my best friends now on Clubhouse. They're children. They're venture capitalists. They all started hedge funds at seven. They're all young. These people are young. I'm 36. I'm like elderly. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there's people in Clubhouse that are older. And, uh, you know, it's just like anything else. There's like tech people that like haven't made it. And there's a term for them called entrepreneurs entrepreneurs like one of them was like yeah anyone could go on Instagram but like if you can't come on Clubhouse and tell me for 20 minutes about your thing <laughs> you're a entrepreneur. wow so there are those there are people on Clubhouse by the way that are like just you could tell they're like they're like oh hey Cliff you know long time no see you know you know and it's like oh boy Every now and then they get a Yahoo in there who's like, is there a microchip in the vaccine? And they're like, that's completely unfounded. While they're sitting there putting it in. You know. <laughs> but uh, it is a lot of fun. We and Ben are on it all the time. We plan to be on it even more. We have fake, sometimes I do fake financial seminars mm. on there. I'm doing a comedy show on there Sunday. I'm doing 10 minutes of comedy. I don't know how that's going to work. Not really excited about that. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I might get a call. After this drops Saturday night, they go, yeah, man, that got canceled. <laughs> no, but it, 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 listen, it is no secret that there's a lot of people out there that have very different ideas of how your life should be run. And when you hear them talk about it, it is interesting. It's fascinating. I could listen to it for hours. It's endlessly fascinating to hear the way these people's minds work because they're always in the shadows. We always talk about them, the tech titans, the oligarchs, the technocracy, and then you actually hear the, and it's not a conspiracy. When you, and I'm sure that the finance shit is not really a conspiracy either. Mm -hmm. It's just these communities in these echo chambers, they can exist on 4chan about uh, Pelosi eating kids, or they can exist in Silicon Valley. There's these echo chambers, and you just hear the way these people formulate their thoughts and ideas about the world, and you understand how everything works and also how hopeless everything kind of is. Because you go, oh, if it was this top-down conspiracy, it's like you might be able to unravel it. But it's like, no, it's just this consensus being created all the time with all this social pressure. And there's all these people that are highly gifted, very intelligent, very driven, very motivated, very rich, but they also want to really be good people. And they don't know how to be. And they don't realize they don't know how because they've spent their entire lives really being brutally committed to themselves. And that's how you make that kind of money. You are very much into you. I didn't get to be a funny comedian by spending 10 years feeding the poor. I feed them now. They're my friends. But most of the time, I was focused on my craft, being funny, doing comedy, making sketches, podcasting. So these people who've spent their lives thinking about, number one, are now in this position where they've been thrust into the public spotlight. And I'm sure they now want to help. And how do you help? Well, I can't give you my money. I can't give you all my money. So... We gotta admit, it's gotta you got it gotta be a little nicer. You gotta be nice. You like guys, you're like being very hurtful right now, and you like have to consider people's emotional state and their mental health, and you can't really say anything. And that's it. Okay. Now go on this app. And that's where you can see your family. That's when you're allowed to like see our family. And if you're giving your children advice we don't like, we're just going to shut it off. You'll be deplatformed from your family if you keep it up. You know, imagine that just the kids at the, like the kids sitting at the dinner table looking at their father. They're like, dad, you've been deplatformed. 
you said I should lose weight. And dad's like, you should. Kid's like, dad, you're deplatformed. That was hurtful. But when you hear these people speak, it really, you get this idea of like, oh, that, so that's where the cognitive dissonance comes from. They're, they're entrepreneurs, highly successful uh, people. Then they then have to be people who are altruistic and they have to have a social conscience. And then they go, okay, well, what's the most important thing? Ending racism. There it is. Ending misogyny. Ending cruelty. We're going to end cruelty. We'll do that. And then maybe somewhere in there, if possible, you'll maybe get a knee operation that you need so you don't have to limp around. But before you get that knee operation, we're going to make sure none of those kids call you stumpy or something. We're, that's more important. It's actually more important for us that you're not made fun of for your condition than medicating you for that condition. That's more important for us. Yeah, you got cancer, but, and you shaved your head, but nobody called you baldy, right? Been like, no, everyone's been very nice. I'm dying, but everyone's been lovely. They've been absolutely lovely. And that's where we're at. And that's what's a little terrifying to me. That's what's terrifying to me. We've created, Adam Curtis, hypernormalization, a fake world. This fake world of uh, technology where the real world, and every now and then it bleeds into the real world. Some guy with horns runs into the Capitol. Uh, if somebody burns your business down uh, because the cop shot a guy. Uh, there's a massive fucking terrorist attack because people overseas or here were able to connect with each other, uh, whatever the case may be. But for the most part, it's this fake world that we've created that allows us to feel like we're really good people and that we're doing the right thing. But all of the problems in our real lives get worse. Every day, all of your problems get worse. And what does it force you to do? Just log on. Just come in here. No one will be mean to you. No one will say the wrong thing. You want a job? Come on in. You want to be heard? Say what we want you to say. That's all. And you don't go outside. You can't go outside. It's dangerous. It's for your own good. Oh, you're making money? The stock market? So that, that's what you're dealing with. I wish you were only dealing with one group of nefarious elites. You're actually dealing with many different cartels of people, all whom want you dead. It's a little depressing, but, but it is fun. It's a fun app. Wish I'd invested in it. It's a fun app. If the peasants could hear the king, they would. If you had spent all the day pulling the turnips out of the ground and then the Lord was driving by, you know, and the Lord was coming by on his horse and he's like, you get it more. And you're like, you're just dirty and drunk. And then when you went to the tavern, if there was a way for you to hear what the king planned to do to you tomorrow, you would listen. You'd listen. And you'd like some of them, even though they were killing you. Even though they were destroying you, you'd like them. You know, you would sit there at the tavern, you get a little drunk, and, the, and you know, the queen would go, you know, we must focus right now on getting more out of them. We got to get more work out of them. And somebody at the tavern would be like, you know, she's got a lot of class, doesn't she? She's got a lot of class. Uh, she's very well spoken. She's a very good speaker. And you'd be like, right, but she's saying that we should be whipped more. Rot, rot. That's not good, is it? But that's what it is. I'm impressed. I'm impressed on the club. I'm impressed by um, their ability to articulate the uh, shackles I will be forced to live in for probably the rest of my days on earth. They're very clear. They're very good at it. So I'm like kind of impressed. I'm like, this is a, this is impressive. But it is, it is scary. But we're not an investment advice show, but hold the line. Hold the line. Buy the stocks. Mm -hmm. Hold their feet to the fire. Try to get an invite to Clubhouse, not from me. And keep your mouth shut in there. Talk if you're asked to talk, but listen. 
Listen to the future. And maybe I'm wrong. I'd love to be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think so. But, you know, because, you know, I learned that pandemics are just coming now. They're just coming. It's the new strains. There's 19 strains. And and I'm not saying they're not out there, but it's like, it's just China, by the way. You look at China, they're just like, they're in a club like, You know, we're driving around in our cars. We're like, "Is can can you throw me a burrito through a window?" And China's just partying. So, I mean, at the end of the day, folks, we're excited. This might be our last episode of California. We don't know. We're looking to get out of get out of here, kind of ASAP. Um, you know, the new producer on the show, Lee Sayat, <laughs> will be taking over next week. Some that's how dumb people are. Somebody messaged me like, "Is Ben?" Really leaving? Remember the time like we were nice to each other for one moment and they were like, are you guys, is he leaving the show? But we're going to be down in, we're going to be down in Texas. I think it'll be a good change. I, here, and here's something to think about. Wherever you quarantined, you're going to want to leave mm. if you can. Mm. Wherever you were in a quarantine, you're just going to want to get out of there. You're going to want something new. You're not, you're just going to want to go somewhere new. You know? And back, back, that's when I thought the quarantine was ending, which I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be rolling quarantines, rolling pandemics, new apps, more fun. Here's Zoom. It's going to be a lot more fun. Just get on the app. It's okay. Just get on the app. Shut your mouth. Get on the app. Get the vaccine at Chili's. Go from Chili's right to your home. Don't stop and see a friend. We consider that uh, any uh, gathering of three or more people, we can uh, consider domestic terror. So no gatherings, no large gatherings, back to the house, back on the app where you'll be monitored. Everything uh, you say and do will be listened to. Your data will all be sold to companies that market uh, to you, uh, you know, uh, cookie dough popsicles or whatever you're going to get. And then you just sit in your house. And if you don't like it, if you don't like it, you can just, we can just get rid of you. And then we don't know what happens. I don't know. You could go to the woods and, uh, you know, do whatever you want. But this is the reality. This is the future, and it's going to come with some cool shit, too. It'll have some fun stuff. You know, you know, Chelsea Handler will, you know, narrate a documentary about Nelson Mandela. Uh, you know, Elliot Page will remind you that the uh, you don't need food anymore. The green powder that's delivered to your house is sufficient, and you'll be, you'll be, like, Elliot's brave. I don't know why I always do British for that, but it's fun. But you'll just go, Elliot's, Elliot's really brave, and then you'll eat the green powder. You'll put water in it, and it'll become like a souffle. That's what I think we'll eat in the future. It'll become like a just like an interesting like souffle type of uh, thing with protein and everything, and you'll just eat that. And then the holidays, you'll get food. The holidays, they'll be, they'll be like food for you. You can have like food, and you'll be like, I remember. But then you'll get all bloated, and you'll be like, I remember. This is not even. God, remember we ate this every day? That was gross. So like you'll you'll get to eat like a one Thanksgiving a year and then you'll feel like shit and then you'll just look for you'll actually look forward to like the green souffle that you just need water for where you just eat it every day. And then they'll be like and there'll be different kinds of souffle, it'll be like all different flavors. So it'll be like, it'll be like 30 flavors. And then and if you complain about that people get mad at you. They'll be like there's 30 fucking flavors. They'll be like dude, I used to be able to go to the grocery store and cook what I wanted to. They'd be like, dude, everyone died from that. And you go, not really. They go, yeah, they did. That's why we eat the purple souffle to honor Elliot Page. You go, what? Dup, dup. You'll, they'll have the gay souffle with all the different colors. It's, it's the bravery of Elliot Page. You're know, just like, I kind of, sometimes I want a steak. And they go, Elliot Page. <laughs> they'll just start screaming at you. Everyone will be non binary in Hollywood within five years. Everyone will be non binary. Watch. As soon as your career dips a little, like it'll dip a little bit, you go right back up like a stock. It's like a stock, like ah, older, older, not great, not the best looking, non binary, back, 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 back. It's just going to be like a stock. Buy on the dips. You should have bought Elliot Page on the dip because she's back. They're back. Sorry. Fuck. I'm off now. <laughs> They're back. Buy Elliot on the dip. Because they are coming back and hold the line on Elliot. Hold the fucking line. 
But I'm, I'm happy people made some money. I hope they continue to make money. The forces that are united against us here are inconceivably powerful, incredibly dedicated, very connected. And every day while you are sleeping, they are marshalling their considerable amount of power, all of their resources, their legal team, their marketing department, their brand ambassadors, their social media influencers. They're getting them all together and they're going to put together a war chest of fucking just that it's just going to blind you. You're going to just be blinded. You're not even going to be, you're going to barely be able to function every day with the incessant, you are going to be beat, you're going to be beaten down where you love that suit. When they deliver that purple souffle to your house via drone, no contact, and you eat the purple souffle and you're able to go and talk to your friends for 20 minutes uh, on an app. Uh, uh, and, and then if, 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 if somebody says something like, you know, you know what doesn't make sense to me? It'll just, look, doop, they're off. They'll be like, your room doesn't seem positive. Shall I remove the disruptor? Shall I remove the negative person? And you know what? You go, kind of, yeah. They'll go, yeah, you kind of want them gone, you know? So just know that guys like me are going to seem crazier and crazier and crazier every year. Um, and that's why we'll just all have to go with the program. I'm just, we're, we're just going to, well, you're going to have to kind of go along with the program. Like I will have to transition to a woman to keep doing the show. Truly. I will have to transition to a woman to just keep doing this show. I'll have to come out here and, and I'll have to talk like this, like an Alexa. Everyone on clubhouse is basically Alexa. They're just Alexa. And they go, what we're really looking for is different ways to use streaming to enhance the user experience. We're very excited about that. We're very excited. I'm really looking to partner with young entrepreneurs, young women of color, and really trying to elevate marginalized voices to create a space where people are treated fairly and respected. Because all over the world, what we've realized here in Silicon Valley, what we've realized is all over the world, people have the exact same needs. And that is... Everybody everywhere, no matter gender identity or race, truly wants to be forever and always a slave. And we're going to do that for them.